فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل واشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه والتابعين لهم باحسان الى يوم الدين اما بعد وان اور اكسبلنيشن اوف ذا بوك منهج الحق ريتن باي ذا جريت نوبل امام العلامه عبد الرحمن ابن ناصر السعدي رحمه الله تعالى we stopped at the 45th line in which inshallah we ta'ala we're going to carry on from sam wa iyyaka wal mar'a alladhi in sahibtahu khasirta khasaran laysa fihi taraddad and beware of any person by whose companionship you would suffer great loss without any doubt so the author rahimahullah says wa iyyaka wal mar'a alladhi in sahibtahu خسرت خسارة ليس فيه تردد. The author here is warning against an evil friend, a person if you mix with, evil will come to you from them. That person can be a friend of innovation, and it can also be a friend of desires. So it can be a friend who has the illness of doubts, which is an innovator or a disbeliever. Or it can be a friend that has shahawat, desires. So there are t- two types of people that a person should not befriend. Ashabu shubuhat and ashabu shahawat. The ones who possess doubts, stay away from them. And those who have da- desires, and they are people of desires, you also need to stay away from them. Walidharika, both of them are also mentioned for the people of innovation scholars call them ahlul ahwa'i wal bid'ah they also call them ahlul ahwa'i wal shubuhat shahawat that is also the case because if you befriend those type of people and you mix with them to add the ila ta'thuri bihim it will lead for them affecting you and they will affect you internally and they will also affect you externally <clears throat> Unless you sit with them in order to teach them and to educate them and to advise them. But if it's the French, if it's the sitting of mu'anasa, friendship, and to enjoy time with them and to laugh with them, then there will come a day where you f- will think like them, speak like them, and act and carry yourself in the way which they carry themselves. And we've seen many people like that. Who got affected just by people they hang around with. It was said to Abdul Razak ibn Hammam al-Sanani rahimahullah. Your teachers that have taught you. And Abdul Razak ibn Hammam al-Sanani was the teacher of who? He was the teacher of Imam Ahmed. So, but he had tashayyu in him. And Imam Abdul Razak ibn Hammam al-Sanani had tashayyu in him. Tashayyu doesn't mean that he was a rafidi or anything like that. But he had the minor tashayyu in him. And if you want to know more about this concept of a tashayyu and how the aimed al hadith were and sometimes narrated from people who had tashayyu, I advise you to go to the kitab Mizan al Itidal written by Imam al Dhahabi. The first individual who he talks about, his name is called Aban, in which Imam al Dhahabi talks about, if I'm not wrong in the name, but it's the first individual in which he brings in his book. When he speaks about him, he says, Shi'iyun Jalid. He was a hardcore Shi'i. Okay? And then he talks about the types of tashayyu' there are. In that beginning of his book, Mizalul Atidal al Imam Dhabi. The point here now is, Abdul Rizak ibn Hamam al Sana'aniyu had tashayyu' in him. And he was the teacher of who? Imam Ahmed ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal. Rahimahullah. So they said to Abdul Razak, your teachers are teachers of the Sunnah. You, take, you took knowledge from people of the Sunnah. But where did this tashayyu come to you from? And so he said, there was a teacher I used to go to. And when I looked at his character and the way he carried himself, 
it affected me. It affected, it affected me. And it had left these, the remnants of this, or what has remained in me from his, from his uh, belief. I picked, that, I picked it up from him. So when a person sits with a person, they do pick up things from them. So that's what we find many people today. Another thing that today takes the same ruling is sitting with people over social media. It's another thing. Television is a no' min al mu'anasa. Watching television, people pick up attitudes from there. It's a no, it's, this is suhba, it's friendship. Okay? Have you not seen a person who imitates a football player or imitates a rapper, but they've never met this rapper? The reason is because they've lived with this rapper over social media, over the internet, over television. You see? Um, that also falls under this. Be careful and be cautious of the individual that if you befriend, what will happen to you? You're going to be in a state of loss and a state of crisis and calamity. Which is that لا شك في وضوح خطورته ولا ريب that there is no doubt about its dangers and its severity. Wallahi, sometimes you see an innocent young boy or an innocent young girl that you see in primary school. In primary school, when you saw that young boy or girl, then they go to secondary school and they start hanging around with the wrong crowd. And then you realize, subhanallah, sahib is sahib. A friend can change your perspective in life and the way you see things. With Alika, we are created, as the scholars say, we are created to uh, take from one another. In life, we need to coexist. So people speak like each other, walk like. Anyone you admire and you respect, you tend to find that you speak like that, that person. You imitate that person. They affect your, the way you carry yourself, the way you are as, in the, as, as an individual. So make sure who you take your friend and the person you hang around with. Naam. خذ العفو من خذ العفو من أخلاق من قد صحبته كما يأمر الرحمن فيه ويرشد. Excuse the conduct you may experience from those whom you accompany, as commanded and directed by Al Rahman. Here the author, Rahimullah, he says, Take with you forgiveness. This, li this line of poetry, the author, Rahimullah, took it from the ayah straight away. The statement of Allah in Surah Al-A'raf, uh, Ayah 199, where Allah says, Khudil Afwa. وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَأَعْرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ Take with you forgiveness, command good, and turn away from those who are ignorant. That's why the author says after that, كَمَا يَأْمُرُ الرَّحْمَانُ Like Allah commands you. Because Allah says to you, خُدْ Take, command. And as we know in أصول الفق, وَالْأَمْرُ تَقْتَضِ الْوُجُوبِ That the command indicates obligation. If Allah commands you to do something, it's obligatory and it's compulsory. If the Messenger وسلم, tells you to do something, it's also obligatory and it's also compulsory. You have to do it. Ibn Taymiyyah said something very, very powerful, extremely powerful. And he said this in his Kitab Majmu'ul Fatawa, the 30th volume, page 370. He mentions that Ibn Taymiyyah he says, وَهَذِهِ الْآيَةِ This verse, which I just read right now, خُذِ الْعَفْوَ وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ وَعَارِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِلِينَ He says, this ayah, جِمَاعُ الْأَخْلَاقِ الْكَرِيمَةِ It is the summary, it is the conclusion of good manners. فَإِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ مَعَ النَّاسِ إِمَّا أَنْ يَفْعَلُ مَعَهُ مَا يُحِبُّ أَوْ مَا يَكْرَهُ Because when a person is with the people, they may do to you what you like and love, or they may do to you that which you dislike. 
Pay attention to this. For Umira, then this. So when you're with the people, one of two is going to take place, right? The author of the team is saying, when you're with the people, one of two. Either they're going to do to you what you like, or they're going to do to you what you, what you dislike. Sah? Each time the verse told you what to do. For Umira, an ya'khuda ma'a minhum ma yuhibbu ma samihu bih. وَلَا يُطَالِبُمْ بِزِيَادَةٍ وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا مَعَهُ مَا يَكْرَهُ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهُمْ The first part it says خُذِ الْعَفْوَةِ which is to take with you forgiveness good with you وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ sorry وَأْمُرْ بِالْعُرْفِ sorry take with you good deal with the people in a very good manner carry yourself in a nice way in response to their good, you deal with them in good. What about if they deal with you in evil? He goes, وَعَرِضْ عَنِ الْجَاهِرِينَ The part that says, turn away from the ignorant. وَلَا يُطَالِبْهُمْ بِزِيَادَةٍ وَإِذَا فَعَلُوا مَعَهُ مَا يَكْرَهُ أَعْرَضْ عَنُهُ But if the person does more than that which you, if they do to you that which you dislike and you're not in favor of it, then you turn away from them. So, if the people are you're with them, you're either they're either going to do good for you or they're going to do something which you dislike and is harmful to you. So the author, rahimahullah, tells us that what is commanded to, for you to do is what take from the good that which they do for you. Don't ask them for more. Don't demand for more. Because the word Allah is saying here right now is wa amur bil urfi. Urf means what is standard. Don't ask for more. And then if they do to you that which you dislike, nah, turn away from them. So that's why the author, rahimahullah, he mentions that this is what? Jima'ul akhlaq al karima This is the summary of good manners. So that's why it's very powerful. <coughs> and he himself, rahimahullah ta'ala, Abdul Rahman Nasr al-Saudiyu in Taysir al-Kareem al-Rahman fi tafsir al-Kalam al-Mannan. That book of his is a book, Salahatan, which the author, uh, Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasr Saudi, gave a lot of importance to Biljanib al Tarbawi, the Tarbiyah related matters in that book, and Tahrib al Akhlaq. And he goes and he speaks about it. I think a student of knowledge should go and look at it, inshallah, ta'ala, what he says there. <laughs> Which is what I mentioned. كما يأمر الرحمن فيه ويرشده. نعم. رحل عن الدنيا فليست إقامة ولكنها زاد لمن يت لمن يتزود. Depart from this world, for it is not a permanent dwelling. Rather, it is a source of provision for one who uses it at it uses it as such. The author, rahimahullah, he says, Tarahal anid dunya falaysat iqamatan. Depart from this world. For verily, it is not a place of residency. It's not a permanent residency. Don't ever consider, my beloved brothers and sisters, that this world, it's a place of residency. That this is where you live. This is your country. This, the world is yours. لا. This place is not daru iqama. It's not. But rather what it is, is that it is Daru, daru Intiqal. It's a place where we go through. It's a transitional moment in our lives. And each and every one of us are going to leave this world. Ali ibn Abi Talib said, Irtahalati dunya mudbirah. This world has turned its back on us. And he's left us. Wartahalati al-akhirati muqbila. And the Akhirah has come towards our direction. وَلِكُلِّ وَاحِدَةٍ مِّنْهُمَا بَنُونَ And each and every one of them have its people. Jannah, the dunya has its people. And the hereafter has its people. فَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الْأَخِرَةِ Be from the people of the hereafter. وَلَا تَكُونُوا مِنْ أَبْنَاءِ الدُّنْيَا And don't be from the people of this dunya. فَإِنَّ الْيَوْمَ عَمَلٌ وَلَّا حِسَابٌ 
For verily today is a day of actions and it is not accountability. وَغَدًا tomorrow is حِسَابٌ وَلَا amal. But tomorrow it's accountability, no actions. Today it's actions, no accountability. Tomorrow like in, which is the hereafter, is accountability, no actions. Some of the hukama, some of the wise people said, Ibn Abd, Ibn, Ibn Rajab al Hambari brings in his kitab Jami'u Bayan al Ilmi, sorry, in his kitab Jami'u Ulum al Hikam. Ibn Rajab brings it in his kitab Jami'u Ulum al Hikam that one of the wise said, or some of the wise have said, Ajibtu mimmanid dunya mawliyatun la anhu, wal akharatun muqbilatun ilayhi. يَشْتَغِلُ بِالْمُدْبِرَةِ وَيُعْرِضُ عَنِ الْمُقْبِلَةِ I am fascinated by a person who the dunya has left him and the akhirah has faced him. He busies himself with the one that has left and turns away from the one that is facing him. And as we know, the situation of us in this world is like a traveller. Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, did he say that he said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam akhada rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bi man kibi ama bi man kibi that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grabbed me by the shoulder faqala he said to me kun fi dunya ka'annaka gharibun aw abiri sabil be in this world like a stranger or a person who's crossing a road and from that day onwards Abdullah ibn, Abdullah ibn Umar used to say Abdullah ibn Umar used to say from that day onwards, إِذَا أَمْسَيْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الصَّبَاحِ وَإِذَا أَصْبَحْتَ فَلَا تَنْتَظِرِ الْمَسَاءِ وَخُذْ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ وَمِنْ حَيَاتِكَ لِمَوْتِكَ If the evening occurs, do not wait for the morning. And if the morning comes, do not wait for the evening. وَخُذْ صِحَّ مِنْ صِحَّتِكَ لِمَرَضِكَ Take health for when illness occurs. And also take your life as an opportunity before death comes. Be a person who is prepared and ready. A person who safeguards ala fara'id al-Islam, the things that has been made obligatory in the religion. Also, mubta'idan anil harami, far from the things that have been prohibited from you. Because each and every one of us is going to leave this world. And we're going to be rewarded in accordance to our actions. ولذلك ابن رجب رحمه الله said about this hadith that I just read. He said, وهذا الحديث أصل في قصر الأمل في الدنيا. He said, this hadith is a foundation. It's a foundation showing us how short this world is. وأن المؤمن لا ينبغي له أن يتقيد الدنيا وطنا ومسكنا. And this hadith also shows us that a believer should not take this dunya as a place of residency. فَيَطْمَئِنُّ فِيهَا which he then tra- finds tranquility and comfort. وَلَكِنْ يَنْبَغِي but rather what is needed from him is أَنْ يَكُونَ فِيهَا that he becomes like in it كَأَنَّهُ عَلَى جَنَاحِ سَفَر It's like he's on a, a, a traveller. يُهَيِّئُ جِهَازَهُ لِلْرَحِيلِ He's preparing his, his items for departure. وَقَدْ اتَّفَقَتْ عَلَى ذَلِكَ وَصَايَ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ And all the prophets unanimously agree upon this advice to their followers. قَالَ تَعَالَ حَاكِيًا Allah said talking about عَنْ مُؤْمِلِ آلِ فِرْعَونَ The believer of آلِ فِرْعَونَ That he said يَا قَوْمِ مَا بِيْبُلْ إِنَّمَا هَذِهِ الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا مَتَاعَ My people, this dunya is a very short joy. وَإِنَّ الْآخِرَةَ هِيَ دَارَ الْقَرَارَ and that the hereafter is the place of residency, permanent residency. وَكَانَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ يَقُولُ And Ibn Rajab says that the Prophet used to say, مَالِي وَلِلْدُّنْيَا إِنَّمَا مَثَلِي وَمَثَلُ الدُّنْيَا كَمَثَلِ رَاكِبٍ قَالَ فِي قَالَ فِي ظِلِّ شَجَرَةٍ ثُمَّ رَاحَ وَتَرَكَهَا What am I to this dunya? Except the example to me and this dunya is a person who was on a riding beast and for a period of time he went under a shade so the sun was burning him so he went under shade 
And as the sun kind of went down and it got better, he got up and he left. That's all I am in this dunya. It's like that shade. I took it as a shade and I'm going to leave it. And you know how long it takes for the sun to go down, the heat to be gone a bit. It doesn't take years or months. It takes hours. And after that, the sun is gone. The person keeps it moving. And that's all it is for me in this dunya, the Prophet saying. Then the author after that he says, So don't take this dunya as a place of permanent residency. But rather, what it is, is This dunya is a zad. It's a provision for the hereafter. It's storing and packing up. And based on what you pack is what you're going to use later. If what you take with you is beneficial stuff, you take with you good food, you take the right equipment, it will last long. But if you forget water, you forget the fire, you forget important things, what's going to happen to you? The chances of you getting destroyed is very high. That is the same if you don't if you, if you do the same when it comes to taking the provision uh, for the hereafter. The poet, he said, فَمَنْ زَرَعَ خَيْرًا وَجَدَ ثَوَابَهُ أَجْرَهُ That any... مَنْ جَدَّ وَجَدْ وَمَنْ زَرَعَ حَصَدْ Anyone who strives, he gets what he's worked for. And anyone who plants, he will reap the fruits of the efforts. And the, and the hard work that he put in. Anyone who plants good, the fruits that he will take are good rewards. But if you place bad seeds into the earth, the fruits that are going to come out are going to be based on the seeds that you put in. And that's why Allah said in the Quran, وَتَزَوَّدُوا فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الزَّادِ التَّقْوَى وَاتَّقُونِ يَا أُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Take a provision for verily the best of provisions, the best provision you can take with you is taqwa. What taquni ya ulil albab? Oh, those of you who are wise, come with taqwa. So the best provision to take with you is what? It's a taqwa. When you're a traveler, what's the best thing to take with you? Water. Hello. Because it's life and death situation. Water is what you need. Your body requires water. Can't be dehydrated. So here, if you were told to take one thing with you, you would take what? Water, right? In order to live, I mean. And if it's the hereafter, the provision that you should take is a taqwa. It is a taqwa. وَلِذَلِكَ ibn Abi dunya in his kitab as zuhud and Abu Naim al-Asbahaniyu in his kitab Hilyatul Awliya wa Tabaqatul Asfiya he brings this a khutbah done by Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz done a khutbah. And he said the following. He said, Inna dunya laysat bidari qararikum. Kataballahu alayha al-fana. Wa kataba ala ahliha minha al-da'an. Fakam min amirin mawthiq. Amma qalilun yakhrubu. Wa kam min muqeemin mughtatibin. Amma mughtabitin. أما قليل يضعن فأحسن رحمكم الله منها الرحلة بأحسن ما بحضرتكم من النقلة وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى عمر بن عبد العزيز said in his khutbah verily in his, verily this dunya is not a permanent residency Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has destined for this world الفناء for it to perish and to go and Allah wa ta'ala has written for its people to transit from this position, place to another place. And that statement itself alone, if a person ponders on, that is the reality of the dunya. So when the author says, It's a place that you were brought to go through an exam. It's dim-wittedness and it is an idiot way of thinking to spend your effort 
in trying to find a life in the place you were brought to stay for a very short time. Now. وكن سالكا ترقى الذين تقدموا إلى المنزل إلى المنزل الباقي الذي ليس ينفذ. And follow the path of those who preceded you to the everlasting abode which has no end. The author now goes وكن سالكا ترقى الذين تقدموا. Tread on the path of those who have preceded you. He's talking about السلف الصالح. Take their path. Especially as sahabatul kiram the Prophet's companions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The companions of the Messenger, radiyallahu anhum, wa ardahum, may Allah be pleased with each and every one of them. Because Allah told us in the ayah 100 surah al tawbah وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ وَرَضُوا عَنْهُ so we were here, three groups of people are mentioned. The Sabiqun, sorry, from the Sabiqun, who? Al Muhajirin wal Ansar. And the third group is what? Wal Ladina Tabauhum and those who follow them in good. So we only have the opportunity to be from what? Those who follow them in good. By taking their path, you will find success in this world and you'll also find success in the hereafter. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, Man kana mustannan fal yastanna bi man qadmat fa inna al hayya la tu'man alayhi al fitna. Ulaika ashaba Muhammadin. He said, If you want to hold on to, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said, If you want to hold on to and stick to a path, then stick to the path of those who are dead. For verily the one who is alive. For verily the one who is, the one who is alive is not assured of safety. Verily they are the companions of the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The author then goes on to say, ilal al manzil al baqi means they have preceded us by going to Dar al-Akhirah, the place of permanent residency. And their life has gone. But they spent their life upon al-istiqamati was sadad. They were steadfast and they were upright. They died, but they spent their life with what? Al-ilmu nafi wal amalu salih. Beneficial knowledge and righteous action is what they came with. So they are our what? Fahaulai hum qudwatuna. So they are our role models. And they are the people whom al qawmu la yashqi man yaktadi bihim. He will not be from the people of the hellfire, the one who treads on their path and imitates them. Wa yasiru ala manahijihim and takes their methodology as a methodology. Illam takunu mithlahum fatashabahu. Inna tashabuha bil kirami falahu. If you can't be them, or you can't be like them, then imitate them. For verily, imitating the righteous people itself is a virtue. So we need to t- tread on their path and follow them. We're nowhere close to them. مَا نَحْنُ فِي مَنْ مَضَى إِلَّا كَبَقْلْ فِي أُصُولِ نَخْلٍ طِوَالٍ So we are nothing in comparison to who they were. May Allah wa ta'ala make us from those who follow their path and who call others to also follow that path. Naam.